I get what everyone is saying about this show. It's not a good show, but I love it anyway. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, my name is Mandy. You're watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about a new, not super promoted property from Netflix, First Kill. I knew this show was coming out because I followed the author, V.E. Schwab, who wrote the short story that was in the horror anthology that the show is based on. I have been seeing her post on Instagram promoting the show for the past year or so. And so I knew the show was coming out. I knew it was going to be sapphic, vampires, Romeo and Juliet style, hunters. I was excited, but I also saw what the budget was looking like. I saw what production was looking like. So I was like, okay, I'm going to give it some room. I'm going to give it some time. I'm going to see how it feels. And then the, the trailer came out and I was like, okay, it's cheesy. Looks cheesy. Fine. No big deal. <laughs> this show is, it's, it's not good. It's not good. It's a mess, frankly. Certain things are better than others. Certain things I like more than others, but it does not change the fact that I love this show and I want 18 seasons. <laughs> it's trash, but it's my trash, you know? The comparison that I wanted to make with this show is this and then My Babysitter's a Vampire. That's what I was getting from this show. And some of you may be like, that's not a fair comparison. The, my baby sister's a vampire is high art. This is a mess. And I understand, again, it's scratching a itch. I'm not saying it's like the same, it's not filling the void, you know? It's just like, okay, yes, I like this. The target audience for the show is a bit confusing. Obviously, it's more of an adult show, evidenced by the swearing, the, I wouldn't even say there's a lot of gore. Again, see, mm, who is this for? <laughs> I know it's for me. If you were to like slap an age group on it, I'm assuming PG-13, maybe. See, I feel like that's the thing with Netflix is they need to get more specific on their target demographics. I know their goal is streaming with binging and all of that. And so it doesn't matter if they have a target demographic because they see so many of their shows appeal to a large audience. I feel like this show would have had so much better luck if it had just like honed what, who it wanted to watch. The show was giving me the vibes, like I said, of My Babysitter's a Vampire, but also the troupe. Do you guys remember that show? Nickelodeon, I believe, or Cartoon Network. It was like a group of uh, teenagers in a high school selected to fight monsters on campus because uh, teenagers don't have like the fear that adults have of the unknown. So they're more likely to go and fight monsters. I just remember I watched every episode, <laughs> you know, but the CGI was kind of, in my understanding, on par with that because the CGI in the show is a mess. Like I said, the budget's low and I'm fairly certain like a third of the budget went to the music choices lot of songs in this show. Choices were made and I don't think all of them were good, but all in all, this show was, I had fun with it. Let me explain the premise so far. So we have two houses, both alike in dignity. We have the Burns and we have the Fairmonts. The Burns are a family with a long lineage of monster hunting. They've been monster hunting through generations. They are part of the guild, which is a monster hunters alliance. And then we have the Fairmonts, they're legacy vampires. Legacy vampires are day walkers and they're very hard to kill, which we learn later in that it's impossible to kill them in this show for the most part. We have Juliet Fairmont. She is a legacy vampire and the youngest of her family. She just turned 16 two weeks ago and she's having a really rough time with her vampire puberty. She's taking blood pills to kind of alleviate the symptoms, which seem to be migraines, tears bleeding, potentially coughing up blood, but we don't actually see her do that, I don't think. Also, her senses are uh, running haywire. Her family is trying to encourage her to do her first kill because if she doesn't, she's not gonna be able to control her urges when she's a little more of a established vampire older, basically, and there's a higher chance that she'll lose control and go on a rampage because she can't control her hunger. She needs to get the, the first time out of the way. You know, Calliope is only very new to Savannah. She does not stay in one place very often. Her family moves her around a lot. She had an opportunity to get her first kill the year prior and she lost her nerve. But because of that, her family has now sidelined her because they don't think that she's ready. Is really desperate to kind of prove herself and keeps kind of putting herself in dangerous situations with her family on hunts and things like that to try and get her first kill. We have her dad who is not there at the start of the show. Uh, her mom, Talia Milf, and uh, her two older brothers, Theseus and Apollo, but they call Theseus Theo. Theo was fun. I'll get to what happens at the end with him, but I'm very excited for if we get a season two, what'll happen with this. This show is currently number three on Netflix. So I don't know what's gonna happen. It's not getting good promotion, 
but it's number three for a lot of different territory. They're canceling things left, right, and center. She goes to school with Juliet, and Juliet has a little a little crush. What I did like about this show, both the girls know that they are into girls. They are both out. Their friends know that they are out. I did like that it was never um, like they were confused by their attraction to each other or anything like that. It's just kind of like, damn it, I like this girl. Why is it this girl? Which I, for other reasons, because like you're a vampire, you're a vampire hunter. That's more fun. I like that. I thought it was fun. There's the sequence with Ben and Juliet. Ben is Juliet's best friend. Uh, he's, I would say the human of the show that's not a hunter. And he's like, you like her to go talk to her. And she's like, we've talked. And then cues to a montage of all the times Juliet's talked to Calliope and uh, just doesn't say a single word and just like smiles at her or like is like giddying herself up to go talk to her and then keeps walking. Listen, Netflix, Netflix, I need to know. How long have you had me under surveillance? Why exactly does Juliet talk to him in the same way I do? Excuse me. I feel attacked. That was mean. <laughs> Rude, frankly. And even then, Juliet's ahead of me. She gets a girlfriend out of this, at least for a little bit. Juliet obviously does not know that Calliope is a hunter. Calliope figures out very quickly that Juliet is a vampire. Why does she figure out Juliet's a vampire? Because she has a little crush on Juliet too. But she is like taking stock of the fact that Juliet is watching her and like trying to talk to her and trying to be around her and doesn't clock that Juliet also likes her. She thinks that Juliet is trying to eat her. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> and the thing about Juliet as well is this is something that I didn't think they handled well as well is Juliet's emotions and senses are all very heightened. And so she explicitly says like this crush feels different when talking about Calliope. And my understanding was that was because she was, you know, in the process of becoming a full legacy vampire. And so the sense is, yeah, yeah, your attraction to this girl, this little crush is a little more intense now because the flowers are brighter and shit, you know, like it's things like that. And I felt like that kind of just went out the window. Like all the things that Juliet would be dealing with as a new legacy vampire kind of went out the window and they just kind of start being like, no, this is like a real connection. And I'm like, no, we should have gone more. We need it to be more unhinged. A little, a little more crazy in there. I think that's what was needed here. Invites Calliope to a party that Ben is making her go to at a popular kid Noah's house. And Calliope says, sure, I'll go because she clocked that Juliet is a vampire. And so she's like, okay, this is the time. I'm gonna get her. I, I'll, I'll take her out now. I'll get my first kill. I'm gonna kill a daywalker vampire. They go to the party, spin the bottle happens. They go into a pantry and Juliet kisses Calliope, just kisses her. And Calliope's like, oh, okay, you didn't waste any time. And it's kind of funny because Calliope was like, oh, I thought she was gonna try and kill me. So she has her hand on the stake and it doesn't seem like she's gonna not stake Juliet, but she takes her hand off the stake and they just start making out, they knock over cherries. Juliet's, you know, it's dealing with her emotions. She still hasn't killed anyone, dealing with her emotions. So she bites Calliope and Calliope, because she was bitten, takes out the stake and stakes Juliet. At the party, uh, the lights cut out, lights come back on, a girl is dead, dying. And so cops are called, everyone leaves, uh, Cal leaves, goes home, uh, tells her parents that she uh, that she staked a vampire, but the vampire didn't turn to dust, and her mom, her mom is way too casual about the fact that she may have just staked an innocent teen girl. That was another thing. See, the, okay, it's the whole show, they talk about death. So obviously the burns think that the monsters are monsters. They don't think they have regular emotion. Humans, that's not a person anymore. That's a line that comes out a lot. So they have no problem killing monsters. We just have to do this. So we make it safe for us and for other people. But the pheromones, the death thing is a little more all over the place. Like the first kill, one thing. It's known that her parents feed. I don't think we ever actually see them go and feed. Her sister, Eleanor, literal serial killer. She's killing people left and right. But like her being a serial killer is frowned upon because she gets caught. But I don't know if it's because she is a serial killer because they don't seem to have a problem with draining people or like, we're not sloppy. We don't get rid of bodies. Like the death thing for both families, I think was very inconsistent. Talia, her mom, I don't know if she's trying to mitigate the uh, reaction out of uh, Calliope for maybe killing a classmate. 
I don't know. But she's like, yeah, then, then that wasn't a vampire. She didn't turn to dust. That wasn't a vampire. You didn't, you staked someone else or you staked something else. But she's like not concerned that like there might be a dead body there. Julia wakes up, pulls the stake out, goes home. But her parents all think because there's blood on her mouth because she bit Cal. And there was a dead girl found at the party that Juliet did in fact get her first kill. So uh, they decide to celebrate. They're going to have her coronation ceremony to make sure that she is, you know, because she's a legacy vampire. Uh, her mother, Margot, calls her mother, uh, who is the keeper of the mul. There's this snake that was in the Garden of Eden that this family descends from. And so her grandmother, Juliet's grandmother, is the keeper of of the Emerald Malkia, that's it, the, the snake. They're like the, the head honchos of the legacy families. Juliet's mom, Margot, is disgraced. She went against an arranged marriage to marry Sebastian, Juliet's father. And uh, he was a human. They refer to him as a halfling made by a legacy vampire, but he is still half human. But because they think she got her first kill, they kick off everything. Eleanor is uh, Juliet's older sister and uh, Oliver, Eleanor's twin, does not live with them, was sent off to Prague, okay? For reasons we'll probably talk about in a minute. Eleanor is like Juliet's role model, loves being a vampire. So right off the bat, she's already my favorite character for the start because I don't know, I'm tired of the vampire that doesn't want to be a vampire. I'm sick of it. I'm over it. Give me vampires who are having the time of their fucking lives. Eleanor takes a little far. I'll admit she takes a little far. She is a serial killer. But you know, I feel like that's uh, that happens. Her dad is the DA in the town. Obviously no one knows that they're vampires. Everyone, also I should point out, monsters exist in this universe. It's not like a secret thing. So I don't know why the why it's such a secret that the Burns, the guild's existence, the Burns existence, they have covers, they travel all the time. They're not supposed to let people know why they're in Savannah. They're there obviously because there's a few flags of monsters popping up. That's why they were brought there. They were not sent there because of the legacy vampires. They just happened to stumble upon them. But monsters like exist in this universe. So again, it's just, there's, there's choices that I, I get why they would make them. Cause it's like, oh, that just makes sense to have hunters have secret identities. But like if, if monsters are a known entity in this world, they just believe that there have not been monsters in Savannah's for like a few decades, basically. Like the monsters uh, haven't been in Savannah in years. There is a vigil for the girl and uh, Juliet is still having her issues. She starts crying blood because obviously she didn't actually get her first kill. Her parents just think she did. So she's still having her struggles. Cal follows and they fight on the roof. They have a whole thing of like back and forth. It's like, I didn't kiss you because I was trying to bite you and all of that it could have been better. But you know, the writing in this was the dialogue was painful. The acting, I, I, I want to blame entirely on the writing, but I don't know if I can. But I mean, it, it was like one of those things where it's like, mm, I can, I'll live. Calliope and Juliet are fighting. Juliet gets punched in the mouth. And so because she's bleeding and because Calliope had an open wound on her hand, Juliet's blood goes onto the open wound and her blood paralyzes. And so she, Calliope gets left like paralyzed on the roof and Juliet leaves and then just somehow is able to get up. Like we do a chime jump and it's the next day and the girls are called into the office. Talia clocks that Juliet is the vampire that was staked. I will say the chemistry between uh, Talia and Margot Beautiful. Thank you. Should have had them hook up, but I guess they're in love with their husbands. So it's fine. So Talia and Margot talk and decide they're going to have a discussion, but Talia clocks that they are day walkers. And also since Juliet was staked perfectly and she didn't die, that they're probably legacy vampires. So they call the guild. Calliope's dad comes back. So does family friends. Three other people come. You found legacy vampires. Monsters are back in Savannah and you fled us to them, Calliope. We're gonna take them all out. They got a tip off that all of these legacy vampires are gonna be there for the uh, coronation. Juliet is having a breakdown because her friend is mad at her for keeping secrets, Ben. And uh, Eleanor knows that she did not kill anyone. And also there's the way, the way that the uh, legacy uh, ceremony works is that there's the Emerald Malkia where it go from the grandmother's arm to her arm and bite her. Emerald Malkia will not bite her if she has not had her first kill. Eleanor is trying to help her a little bit by giving her blood to drink. So it's like, listen, you haven't drained anyone. That's not nearly enough. And it's gonna know that. So Eleanor is like, stall. We'll figure this out. Her mother has been pushing her to do the coronation, all of that. So Juliet finally says, okay, I'm ending it. I, I'm embarrassed you weren't listening. So I'm telling you, I'm not doing this. And so her mom tells the full story about why her sisters never come around and why her mother is just like, why she is disgraced in her mother's eyes. We don't have to do this. It's fine. 
but you will get very sick. This was the easy part. If you had done the hard part, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Obviously you haven't killed anyone. So while that's going on, uh, Calliope tells her family friend, she's like, well, what if some monsters aren't bad? You know, because she's having second thoughts about Juliet being killed because she at least knows that Juliet's kind of a dork and likes her. Friend's like, yeah, of course, I understand. And then tells her parents, because of course, so the parents tell the guild, basically the guild is like, yeah, we, we don't trust Calliope to go on this uh, mission because she's having sympathy for monsters. So we're setting a babysitter to watch her while you guys go and handle this. This guy shows up and he's a dick. He starts questioning, are you worried about your vampire girlfriend? Well, I wonder what would happen with the guild if I took you out. Maybe I'll say you got twitchy because Cal also, like I said, got bitten by Juliet the legacy bites disappear. And so it could be doing something to Calliope. There's some type of bond and connection. And that's why they believe that she cannot go on this uh, hunt. They're fairly certain that that's the bite talking, that it, the venom from her bite or something is manipulating her brain. Like, so she can't be trusted on the hunt because she won't actually hurt Juliet. Calliope fights back and takes off. As she's trying to leave the house just to run away, Eleanor abducts her, because of course she does and ties her to a tree for Juliet. And Eleanor is like, look, you know her, you like her, drain her. Cause that makes it better. But again, she's trying to make Juliet like her. So yeah, getting rid of this obstacle, which is uh, in Eleanor's mind, feelings, would make sense to Eleanor. Oliver showed up, Eleanor's twin, disgraced twin, showed up for the coronation and apparently has actually been in Savannah for a while, but we don't know that yet. But he's there for Juliet. He wanted to support Juliet. Get your friend out of here. I'll handle Eleanor. They start fighting. She's untying Calliope and then all of a sudden the sounds go off because the hunters are there and it's like a sound bomb or something. I don't know, but it makes everyone, all the vampires freak out because they're in Pinhead tearing and they have these silver tipped spears. So everyone's getting uh, stabbed left, right and center. Calliope tells her to run, Juliet runs and then goes back when she hears Calliope screaming, but Calliope had her mouth covered so she wasn't actually screaming. Guild guy goes to abduct Calliope and take her to the guild. Calliope, Juliet and this guy fight. Calliope kills him, they think. They put him in the trunk and they're like, let's get out of here. They take the body to Ben's house, hoping that Ben will help. Ben is like, okay, that's just trash. Guy wasn't dead, so Juliet drains him, gets her first kill. She had to kill him. I will say, every time Juliet's having some type of vampire episode, they do this like red light music ah, sound. Um, that was stupid. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not a fan. I know you're trying to be like, oh, this is all consuming the hunger. But now Ben knows about vampires. Hide the body, uh, Juliet and uh, Calliope, after they hide the body, there's like a bonfire trying to, cause kids showed up or whatever. And so they're like, let's just have a bonfire. Yay, we weren't hiding a body. Uh, Juliet and Calliope go off alone a little ways away and uh, hook up a little bit and then come back because while uh, the coronation was melting down, the vampires weren't dying. The spears were penetrating them and they would go down, but they weren't turning to ash the way that they were supposed to. And so they're freaking out. I believe the family friends were both killed by Oliver by their own spears too, which yikes. So they take Oliver, the hunters, as like a uh, souvenir to try and figure out what the deal is as revenge for killing her parents. They don't know that Cal is missing until they get back to the house. So they're looking for Cal. Juliet's parents are looking for Juliet. Sebastian, Juliet's father, again, is a half vampire and he was stabbed as well. So he healed over, but not internally. Her mother is begging for help, like, please save him, like, please. And she's like, no. Even Eleanor is like, listen, save my father. And uh, she's like, listen, I'm not doing this out of spite for your mother. The anchor is gone. I just don't like your father, basically. And so Eleanor offers that uh, she will take the mother's place because the Davenports now have other heirs that are eligible. And so Eleanor says, I will marry off one of them to unite the clans if you save my father. And so the grandmother's like, that works for me, sure. So she takes the Emerald Malkia and it like burrows into his chest. And I'm confused on this part. I'm not sure if the Emerald Malkia is now, if he is now the Emerald Malkia or if the Emerald Malkia just turned him into this uh, full legacy and then took off. But I kind of think that he is now the Emerald Malkia. I think that Sebastian is now a full legacy vampire slash the Emerald Malkia because they're trying to figure out what'll kill him. And he's just being a sassy bitch about it because of course he is. Jules and Calliope are making out in the woods. And then the dad comes and finds Jules and Calliope and uh, is like, no, I'm taking you girls home. You're not driving, you've been drinking. And so they take the girls home. As they're going, the dad's being really weird. Like eyes go green, which isn't normal. And then there's a witch in the road. So they flee and they don't trust the dad. So they flee again. They go to the school 
spend the night in the theater department that Romeo and Juliet set up, share a bed together. They have a whole like, listen, like I won't bite you. I won't hunt you. Like it's a, it's cute. Could it all have been done better? Yes, because the next morning when the bell rings, they should have been more scared about being caught together in the theater. That's just me. Uh, but they both finally call their parents and say, you yeah, know, uh, we're fine. Uh, we're together deal with it. We're going to stay at school. We're going to have a, a normal day and we'll deal with this tomorrow. Calliope does not know that the family friends are dead and uh, Juliet does not know her dad nearly died. No idea. Just knows he's been acting weird. There is a uh, monster alarm that goes off. There is a zombie on campus. It ends up being Ashley, the girl that died at the party. She came back to life and was a zombie. And so Calliope kills Ashley. She started bleeding. And so Juliet's like melting down a little bit because Noah's blood, not a problem, but Calliope's blood, it's a problem because they're linked. They're popping up in each other's dreams and stuff because of the bite, there's a bond. They go to get rid of the zombie's body and they bump into Oliver. Oliver's witch girlfriend goes, babe, they killed our zombie. <laughs> Oliver admits to Juliet that he's the one that killed Ashley and said, I killed her for you. I've been watching you for a while. I was worried about you. So I just figured I'd give you someone to kill, easy. And then once, like also my girlfriend needed a liver for a spell. And then once you've already killed a girl, why not turn her into a zombie? You know, why not? Juliet's whole family family is pretty fucked up. Her parents could be worse, I would argue. Her parents are pretty much fine. Basically, Oliver is in town because he wants revenge on Eleanor for Eleanor alienating the family against him and ruining his image. Eleanor is doing a meet and greet with her potential new family. And what draws the line is not, you know, being married off because she's fine with that. It's the fact that they want to put into a contract on how many children she'll have. Tells the grandmother like, no, I'm done. I'm not going to Toronto to pimp out my uterus. And her grandmother is like, then you're as useless to me as your mother was. She storms off to go see her dad because her dad is like, like keeping his distance. Grandmother smacks him and then grabs Eleanor and is like, you're not gonna ruin this for me. You're gonna come downstairs. And so um, Sebastian just kind of eats the grandmother, like unhinges his jaw and eats her. And Eleanor is just kind of standing there like, oh, anyways, Margo comes upstairs and is like, where's mother? <laughs> Sebastian, it's so funny the way he says this, it's so good. He goes, my love. Um <laughs> what a Lilith's name. My love. Um. He also doesn't seem to give a shit, but the mother was not a great person to her daughter. So not surprising. Anyway, so it's like, okay, I am now the keeper of the Malkia because I was keeper in waiting. Eleanor is now keeper in waiting. They go tell the Davenports that the deal is off and they can leave. The Burns are convinced that Juliet and uh, Calliope are connected. And so they need to do a severing ceremony on Calliope because in case there was a bite, like that's why she won't leave this girl alone. They do the ceremony. It doesn't really work because they used Theo's blood because Theo's mom, her, his biological mom was killed by a vampire and they're not sure if he was bitten by a vampire or not. And so they did the summoning when he was a child or the severing as a child, just in case. And so they were like, oh, I have antibodies because that's how that works apparently. It doesn't work. Instead, he starts having memories of his mother's murder and remembers that it was during the daytime and the bites disappeared, which means it was a legacy vampire. Cal is like, we, we severed the connection because we are shown a sequence where it looks like she's going to visit Juliet. But Juliet's like, well, then why are you in my dream? And we realize that it's Juliet's dream, which I knew because of the setup of the window. I was like, this is dreamy. This is, this is true Romeo and Juliet. Eleanor takes Juliet out to celebrate being a vampire now. Cause she's like, you did the hard part. Let's go have fun. Gets a little drunk, is dancing and is like, oh, well, let's look at the, work at the sky, you know, to get blood. Start doing a drinking game, a vampire drinking game and Juliet's drunk. And then uh, also the guy had done ecstasy. So now she's technically getting like secondhand ecstasy high. They drain him, they kill him. And Juliet's like freaking out. Realizes that Eleanor is a heartless bitch after they dispose of the guy's body at the swamp. And Juliet's just overall very uncomfortable with one killing a guy again. And also the fact that uh, Eleanor doesn't seem to care and that Eleanor seems to have a tried and true disposal method for the body so that they won't get caught. Anyways, uh, the feds find the body of the guy that Juliet killed to save Calliope, the guild member. And so they start questioning people and all of that because of the fact that there was a bonfire broken up in the same area. So they know it's like, let's just question all these kids. So those are around the same time he died. He was exsanguinated. Juliet's freaking out because it's like, yeah, I drained this guy. They're gonna figure it out. They already know vampires are back in Savannah. They know monsters are back in Savannah. And so Calliope is like, oh, well, let's go to my parents' house. They'll know what to do. And so Juliet's like, yeah, I'll just walk into your hunter parents' house who hate me and think that we severed our connection. Let's do that. Uh, cause they want me dead. And it's so funny because the parents are packing up to leave. And so Calliope should have just waited, should have waited a little longer because she walks in with Juliet as uh, her parents are literally packing up the guns, <laughs> packing up the heavy artillery. And so she's just like, 
please be cool. Please be cool. And then pulls Juliet in and they're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, Clyde B is like, she needs our help. We'll be in my room. Take a beat and come see us. <laughs> First thing her mother says is, you know the rules. How dare you have the door closed with a girl in your room? That's when Calliope says, you know, he tried to he tried to abduct me, but I couldn't fight back. I knew how to fight monsters. I didn't know how to fight one of my own. And Juliet saved me. Yeah, she drained him. She killed him, but she did it to save me. And I don't know what would have happened if she hadn't have been there. Her parents are like, okay, we will not protect Juliet, but they're not going to find out who she is from us. We will not tell them that she's a vampire or that we know this vampire if they come asking us. While Juliet and uh, Calliope are in her room just kind of talking, Guild shows up and is like, we know there's a vampire here because we've been keeping tabs on your family and we know that she's here. Owen starts searching the house and find that Theo and Apollo had been doing all this underground work trying to find uh, information about the the vampire that killed Theo's mother. Juliet and Calliope flee from the house and uh, start going to Oliver's house because Oliver is like, come on over, like, we'll keep you safe, don't worry. But there's a monster checkpoint. And so they have to check everyone. They make them hold a silver coin. Calliope doesn't know problem because she's driving and tries to hand it back. And they're like, no, you too. Juliet does it, it burns her, but Calliope does a quick thinking with the car. So she's able to transfer it over to Calliope without the blood being on it from her hand. Juliet makes a joke to the cop to be like, oh yeah, no, my parents and I are all jokers because they're joking about monsters. And so the cop thinks that Calliope is a monster, a vampire. Why? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. If they truly believe that monsters have been gone from Savannah for so long, then yeah, the new family in town, you would be like, yeah, maybe they're the monsters, you know? Like maybe they're the ones that came back and did this, even though they're not. Again, it doesn't make sense why we're not making hunters, like the guild in general, like a known thing. If monsters are a known thing in this universe, why would it be a secret that there's an organization to hunt them? Like that, that doesn't seem like it would be, that doesn't make sense. But the cop is like, you know what? Let me escort you home. Her parents are like, you need to leave. And Calliope is like, okay, yeah. So uh, when I go home and they come to my family's house and they search it and they find all the weapons and the plans to invade your legacy party, they'll know exactly what you all are and then they'll be back. So do you really want them to get me? And that's what upsets Juliet that her family plan and I'm not questioning that it would be an issue. I'm questioning that Juliet's just now realizing that there was probably a plan in place for the legacy party. Like why just now? While they were at Juliet's house, Theo takes Apollo to meet up with Eleanor to get answers about the family crest to try and find the vampire that killed Theo's mom. While they're doing that, Theo is waiting outside. Always my favorite thing in media. When one, when one person is like worried, like I'm so worried about him. Yeah, she, he, she's probably killing him right now. And then it cuts to them like making out or something. I don't know why. I always think that's very funny. Stupid, but I love it. Anyways, Apollo and Eleanor are making out. They're having a good time, it seems like. And then of course Theo is worried. So he rushes in with a steak just in case and is like pissed off. And Eleanor thinks that Apollo set her up. A fight ensues and uh, they're both beating up uh, Eleanor. Eleanor's kicking their ass. What ends up happening is she gets knocked down. They take a garrote and uh, Theo holds her back so that Apollo can stake her, even though they know that's not gonna work. So I don't know why we're doing this. And so Eleanor, cause she's a crafty bitch, just moves herself out of the way. And since Theo's behind her, Theo is the one that gets staked. They're both freaking out. Uh, Eleanor is just like, this is fun. Our next first date, I'll make sure you remember it because she just erases both their memories. So all they know is that Theo is dying and Apollo is very confused and he thinks he did it. And Eleanor just leaves. Apollo calls Calliope freaking out. So Juliet says, you guys need to go home. You need to get out of here. I'll keep my phone on me. I don't know what to say to this, but you need to go. Calliope and Apollo leave and Juliet cleans the bathroom. As she's leaving, she finds lipstick, which is the same lipstick shade that her sister put on her in episode one. So she knows that Eleanor was there and it was probably Eleanor that did this and that's why they can't remember. So she goes back in. I don't know why she goes back in. Theo comes to and asks, says, help me. And so Juliet drains him because she's hoping that it'll end his suffering and it'll be a quicker way to go. We don't find this out till later, but she leaves. Calliope and Apollo get back to the house and they're like, how are we gonna tell our parents that Theo's gone? And they walk in. Theo is sitting at the table with the parents laughing, having a fine time eating dinner, no problem. They're both freaked out. I would also assume that it was another Wraith or something trying, cause he says things that don't make sense. Like he calls her 
Um, Callie makes weird comments to uh, Apollo as well. And then it's like starts having issues uh, with his stomach. And it's like, I'm gonna go lay down. Theo starts turning into a vampire. Fangs pop out, blood. He's in a lot of pain. Apollo and Cal are just listening from outside, freaking out. Like, should we go in? What should we do? And then Talia comes in and is like, oh my God. So they take him downstairs and restrain him. He's not himself. He's very confused. He's uh, just freaking out. The dad is like, we have to kill him. Cal is like, oh my God, that's my brother. No. Theo breaks out and gets out onto the lawn. Juliet goes to Eleanor is like, you killed Theo. They're ruined, they're upset. They're, they'll never forgive you for this. You're unteachable, I'm done. She like, calls her a gaslighting bitch or all this stuff. Anyways, uh, Eleanor goes to bed, Juliet goes to bed, wakes up and decides, no, we're not doing this. Uh, so she goes and gets the key, brings it to Oliver because she's just done with Eleanor and realizes that she's beyond help. She's not going to become a better person. Then she goes to Cal's house. And that is when Theo rushes past her and knocks her down. And then Paula runs out after her and is trying to talk to Theo. She's like, wait, no, stop. It's not his fault. He's confused. Reveals that she bit him. And obviously we that's when we learn that she had uh, is the one that uh, made him a vampire. And she's like, he's going to be confused until he drinks from his maker. And so she gives him her wrist and he bites it and he's fine for he's still a vampire but he's fine apollo and uh the dad take him inside and cal keeps her outside and immediately puts the spear on her and is like you turned my brother into a vampire and she says you know i i i drained him i didn't mean to turn him and She's like, yeah, but you could have known that you would have turned him, which I mean, I guess you could argue that everyone she's drained, she could have turned. I agree with Cal. It's like, none of, no more of this, I don't know what's going on with me bullshit. She's a legacy vampire. She's not a newly made vampire. There's things that Juliet should know. She should know that if she, she bites bit someone, there's a chance that they could turn into a vampire. However, based on the entirety of the series, there's no reason to assume that she could do that. She's drained, what, two people? neither of whom turned into vampires that she knows of. So Cal has the spear on her and Juliet's like, you know, that won't kill me, but I will never stop until I find a way to kill you. And Juliet says, I love you. I know you love me. Juliet leaves and goes home. They tie up Theo. He's now himself. So he's still a vampire, but he's able to talk. So they gag him. So he's not saying, no, please don't. Cause the dad is still going to kill him. And Tally is not like, not, you're not killing my fucking son. You're not doing it. And then the dad starts being like my son and Talia loses her shit because yeah, Tally is not his bio mom. She's the stepmom. She says, you know, give me time to talk with him. I want to talk to him alone and then we'll do this together. Talia frees him. Oliver takes the key that Juliet gave him from Eleanor's murder storage unit and gives it to the feds. I don't think they know that she's a vampire, but they know that she's a serial killer. Anyways, they go to the house, they storm the house and uh, take her in. The dad is like, don't fight back, go in. And she sees that like Juliet's standing at the end. So she knows that Juliet's the one that turned her in. She's like demanding a lawyer. And so Oliver shows up as her lawyer and is like, I wanna know why you did it to me. Why did you make me kill my turtle? Why did you make me kill our therapist? Why did you make our parents think that I was the monster? Why did you, you know, concoct all these situations where I would have to be the monster? And Eleanor says, because I wanted to. Like, it's that simple. And she's like, you know, dad's gonna get me out of here. They're not gonna leave me here. And he is like, you really weren't paying attention when they sent me to Prague, were you? Uh, it's a matriarchy and their reputation is more important than anything. You've put shame on them and you, you've you drawn attention to the family in a negative way. They're gonna let you rot in here. And so he just leaves, she's pissed. Cuts to the parents, the parents are like, you know, I do think that Oliver will come around maybe jail time will do her good, uh, but we'll figure this out. Cuts to Talia bringing Theo to Oliver's house. She's like, you know, I, you are my son and I love you. Oliver is like, you know, you're a good mom. He's in good hands. And Theo, Theo is such a fun character. He's smart. He's very by the book. He, he, you know, you get a sense of who he is. I think he's going to be a very fun vampire. That's why I want a season two for him. Him alone. Juliet and Calliope can have their little star cross thing. Their will, they won't, they get back together. Enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers again. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, I do want to see Theo as a vampire because I do think it's very much like the training for the job versus actually having the job. And because he's been training, he's been studying vampires most of his life. And now he's a vampire, you know? And like, there's gotta be a disconnect. It's gotta be awkward. It's, it's, I think it would be so fun. 
I think that would be good. Oliver is like, welcome to your new life. I know this is a lot, but I've been in Savannah for a while. You, me, and this witch, we're gonna run this bitch. Cuts to the backyard and there's all these CGI monsters <laughs> and various images. And that's how we learned that that's why the Burns came to Savannah because they were finding out all of these monsters and such in Savannah is because Oliver's been summoning them and bringing them out. End of season one. Is this show good? No, it's a mess. The ADR in this entire series, the ADR, awful, so bad. I get you have to use it, but it was, hey, I need better headphones to be worn by the people doing the ADR at the very least. The other thing that I was not expecting, um, I have subtitles on, on my TV a lot. The subtitles for this show for at least two whole episodes were very off, like whole words missing. There was two episodes specifically where none of the swear words said were in the subtitles. I don't get what the point of that is because you kind of still gotta know what's what they're being said. It just messes up everything. There's just little things that I think could have been better in the show, but overall, I didn't think it was, I had fun watching it. When you start with the overall storyline, of this star-crossed lover's love story, I do think we needed more from them. I do think we needed more consistency, and I do think the ending would have been more explosive if their parents hadn't been giving them little bits of leeway throughout the series. My main issues are the inconsistencies with uh, their opinions on death from both sides. Their actual bond, it's one thing for it to just be puppy love and they're teenagers, so everything is intense and that's just why they are so determined to be together, but that almost doesn't seem like the case. It just seems like I like you and I'm kind of sort of defying my parents, but I love my parents, but I like you. For Juliet and Calliope, I feel like they kind of leaned more into the whole, you're not what I expected or what I was told about or warned about growing up as a vampire or as a hunter. And so how can this be, how can you be wrong when you're different from like the beliefs that I've had or something like that versus I like you and I'm falling in love with you and I am a teenager and my emotions are heightened and I'm also a vampire. And so everything is insane and intense and we have this bond, like the bond thing, not a problem. The breakup is kind of stupid with the bond thing because like Juliet's just gonna show up in your dreams, Calliope. You can try and kill her in your dreams all you want. It's not gonna work, you know, like it's, she's gonna be there. And so, I don't know, I felt like they could have really worked on like that relationship in general because it just seemed a little flimsy, just a bit. I felt like they were trying to add too much in with all the other characters that it just, their main relationship struggled a lot. That being said, I did like pretty much all the other characters. I really liked Margot and Sebastian's story. I really liked Talia. I really liked uh, Apollo and Theo's dynamic. I thought they were fun. I thought they were good foils for each other. Like I said, I really liked Eleanor. I liked what bits we got of Oliver. I would have liked to have seen more Oliver because it doesn't even seem like Eleanor's depiction of Oliver that we were, like we made it, it was made out to seem like Oliver is this monster and that he's not actually a monster. Eleanor made everyone think he was a monster. And then even then it's like, they kind of made it seem like Oliver did everything that Eleanor told him to do, but he's not like against doing, like, I don't know. It feels like they could have, I feel like that should have been clear. Is he a monster like Eleanor or is he a monster because of what Eleanor did? You know, like, I, I feel like that was very inconsistent. Do I think they're gonna get a second season? I really don't know at this point. The reactions I'm seeing are mostly people saying that the show is cringe and not good. Um, and so, it doesn't matter that it's getting views. It's number three in various countries. I don't know what it's doing in the US right now. The budget was low. It wasn't a ton of money. If we do get another season, I hope that, I don't think, I wouldn't say get it a bit or bigger budget for another season, even though that obviously would be ideal. Um, I think they need to tighten up the uh, writing significantly. And also the, <laughs> I, I, again, I don't want to blame the acting entirely on the acting because I do think that the writing, sometimes things are just ridiculous. And it's, would I watch another season? Absolutely. <laughs> I would watch 18 more seasons of this. Like I, I did crank these out. I watched these all in like a day. I cranked it out. I couldn't stop watching. Did you watch First Kill? Did you hear about First Kill? What did you think about First Kill? Did you think it was cringe, but are you fine with cringe? Did you think it was cheese, but are you fine with cheese? Or, or do you completely disagree with me with the entirety of the show? I don't know. Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shane's Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patron. Thank you so much for supporting my patron. If you'd also support my own patron, I'll leave this down below. Like some of my new social media. I'll be up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.
my love. <laughs> it, it's not that funny of a line. It's just the way it was said it was so good. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey, Allen, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash, BC, China, Dirty One, Dawn, LA, Evan, Eric, Feckless, Hopeless, Incognito, Jekka Ray, Joe, John M, Joseph, Jordan, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry's Wink.